Hey everybody, it's Ben. Go Ben. Karen will join us shortly. Um, Vienna waits for you and we have a Vienna. Exactly. My phone agrees. So let's go back uh, to the beginning of the game. Um, Dina has widened the last round. She has three and a half out of eight. She lost in round eight. Um, so this is the chance to redeem herself. And she played the Vienna, knight c3. And this is a pretty popular line now. When when I was a kid, uh, people played knight f3 here. Um, and uh, nowadays people play queen f3. Now I remember at the World Open last year, I was watching two theoreticians play and black played f5. And that's the end of my theoretical knowledge because I don't play white or black in this position. Uh, however, occasionally in bullet or blitz on chess.com, I'll have black in this position and I play f5 and then that's the end of my knowledge because uh, I saw somebody do it. Anyway, Don, Donald played f5. Donald was in a chess camp that I taught about six years ago in, in, uh, in Atlanta and I've known him for a long time since he was about 11 years old. I think he's about 18 now, <clears throat> although I'm guessing. He could be 20, he could be 16. 18 is sort of in the middle. And um, when I first met him, he was about 16, 1700. And now his UHCF rating is about 2250. And his FIDE rating is like 2100 something. Um, Donald actually has four out of eight. So she's playing somebody with more points. He's probably the lowest rated player with four out of eight. And after F5, Dina's thinking. I think, excuse me, typically uh, they'll play either d3 or d4. I guess knight e2 is also a move. And if white wants to, white can take on Poisson on f6, um, which I think I haven't faced uh, in the like blitz and bullet that I've played. I don't think anybody's taken on Poisson against me. But this is the end of my theoretical knowledge. And I don't know if Dina's trying to remember her prep after f5, because I think f5 is a pretty common move. <coughs> Excuse me. And so forth. We're streaming on both channels. It says that we both have zero viewers. Thanks, Twitch. And people are chatting. That just goes to show you what you know, it thinks of those viewers. So did, did, did her opponent not want to be on camera because it's only like his elbow again, like the last guy, or she likes this camera angle. Let's see what our producer says. What's that? Oh, okay. Is it because she likes the angle or because he didn't want to be on camera? Yeah, this is a good angle. I agree. Yeah. So this is the last round. So I'm guessing on the top six boards, probably about half of them will be drawn within half an hour. And then probably the other half will be fighting and people fighting for first. But I wouldn't be surprised if on boards one and two, they're quick draws because uh, the players are tied for first if they draw on boards one and two. And uh, people like tying for first. They hate losing in the last round and winning no money after such a long, hard fight. Uh, my, my voice isn't <clears throat> my usual effervescent self because earlier today, uh, I gave a master class on uh, on chessable, and that was a two hour class, and I was talking ninety five percent of the time, at least. The people weren't very talkative in the class, but I was, and so I, you know, losing my voice talking so much. Okay, Dina's about to make a move, and she played d three. Engine agrees. Okay, so black has two moves here. Knight takes c3 is the best move. And black can also play d4, which is a little crazy. So probably he won't play the crazy move. Probably play knight takes c3 because that's 
be very sound and such. Okay, and she'll play BC. Well, I apologize. That that's that's not PC right now. She'll play BCE. So sorry about that. <clears throat> Wonder if anybody in either chat will get that joke. All right. So uh, knight c3, bc. Now the, the engine wants to play d4 in this position. Um, otherwise, white can play d4 at some point. So we're going to separate the pawns here. Okay, and he did play d4. Seems like he's still in prep. You see people playing and walking around in the background. It's the last round. That's the most fun round because then you don't have to play anymore. Yay. The Dina must be exhausted. Somebody in my chat says, I don't really care for the Vienna. Levy promotes it, so it must be bad. Well, we we don't see the, the Vienna very often at the top level. Wouldn't say it's bad, but it's probably not White's best chance to get an advantage. It's a very good surprise weapon. So if you play the Vienna, you know, three or four times a year against E5, and you play your normal stuff most of the time, and your opponent's not prepared for the Vienna, you can get a pretty nice position. It seems like uh, today her opponent uh, knows the position because he played knight c3 and d4 and f5 relatively quickly, and that's that's the main line right now. Uh, Dina lost this morning, so she has three and a half out of eight. So obviously she wants to finish with a win, playing a lower rated player as the white pieces. Always nice to finish a tournament with a win. It's good that Dina's playing the last round. I think a lot of players in her situation may have withdrawn, you know, losing two games in a row and not having a great tournament, being exhausted from the long trip to Charlotte and playing two games a day. I know I would have withdrawn, but it's much more fun watching you know, chess than, than not playing. I mean, she's there, so you might as well play. <clears throat> Hopefully, she's just not too exhausted from the previous rounds. And that, that's what happens sometimes when you, when you play a younger player. So I'm always exhausted. I'm exhausted like just walking to the board from the pairing sheet. I mean, that's, I'm, I'm already spent. And uh, you know, when all of my opponents are between 10 and 15 years old, and I know it's time to give it up because they, they don't get tired. Uh, and when they're tired, that's like when I'm wide awake. So somebody in the chat's asking if my volume is low. Probably their volume is low. Terrible. Or maybe you're having hearing loss. That's possible. The important thing is Twitch is broken because it says we have zero viewers on both. When we have thousands of viewers, my volume is all the way up. I had to turn up the volume too. What? People are complaining about the volume. I, I blame the producer because otherwise I'd have to blame myself. Mark, Mark is correct. I did get prettier because I got to shave at a haircut yesterday. So he is right. I am prettier. Yeah, the, the, the producer of our show made the volume higher, so it should be okay. That's right. Her opponent is from Miami Vice, the infamous Donald Johnson. Hey, I, I, can, see, I can see James Canty's arm. That was definitely his arm. He's armed and dangerous. That was the first thing that ever happened on the channel that wasn't my fault, that the volume was low. It, 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 happen, it happens once, once in a lifetime. 
letting the days go by, etc. I, I should hang this mic from my collar. Man, that would be tough to do. I'd have to be have a really strong, I have to be like have the muscles of Canty up here to do that so that it wouldn't hurt so much. I never make sense. Now they have to turn their volume down. No, anything but that. So it seems like Dean is out of her preparation. Uh, White can play bishop e2, developing the bishop. Queen g3, which defends the e-pawn, puts pressure on g7 so the bishop can't easily move, and also prepares knight f3. Um, and White can also play knight e2. Those seem like the logical moves. I, I seem to be hearing background noise. Oh, it's from here. It was all my fault. I I I, did, I crossed the streams and then Bill Murray showed up and said, "Don't do that." Yeah, I saw that Deepak Aaron got an IM norm. Although I think he doesn't need IM norms. I think he needs twenty four hundred feet a. So a superfluous norm. And other players got norm. Gus Houston got an IM norm. Um, as somebody pointed out in, in Dina's chat, Atanasov needs a draw against Naradinsky for an IM norm, although he has the black pieces that Naradinsky needs to win if he wants to tie for first. So that's not, that's not going to be an easy task, black against Naradinsky. Okay, she pretended to move, but she tricked me. She has alligator blood. Check, check, check. Can't get rid of her. And she played queen g3. Engine approved. Now the knight can go to f3. The queen is defending the e5 pawn. And if the bishop on f8 moves, I can take on g7. Also, I can play bishop g5, getting a tempo on the queen later. So queen g3 seems excellent. Now we're going to play knight f3, bishop e2, castle, papa john's. The question is, is black going to develop quickly, knight c6, bishop e6, etc., or is black going to be greedy and take the c3 pawn? The answer is fries. <clears throat> the engine wants to play knight c6 and bishop e6 and, and literally doesn't care what move order as long as you play one, then the other. It's sort of like 40 degrees below zero. Is it Celsius or Fahrenheit? First one, then the other. Okay, and I'm allowed to tell Futurama jokes, so that's that, that joke's okay. <clears throat> so Black can just develop his pieces, White will develop her pieces, and we'll have a very interesting, complicated game. Uh, Dean has played eight rounds with only one draw, and the draw went to almost king versus king. It was not a boring draw. It was not like a free range draw. It was a big fighting draw that went over 70 moves. Okay, and, and her opponent did develop a piece, knight c6. So now Dina can decide to prevent dc, and she can play c4, which is explosive, obviously. And for those of you who aren't familiar, which is about half of you, after c4, black cannot take on passant. Unless it's Fiddler showing, then maybe. So White can play Bishop E2 here, Knight F3, C4. Those are, those are the normal moves. An interesting line after C4, which I don't think will be played, is Bishop B4 check, King D1, confusing the audience. The engine actually prefers Black there by, by quite a bit. So I, I think White's supposed to play bishop e2 here. To me, knight f3 looks perfectly cromulent, but uh, uh, engine, engine isn't playing that. She plays bishop e2. I think she knows the position. 
They, and he played bishop e6 very quickly. That's also the engine response. <clears throat> Both sides are developing their pieces. Now, the reason not to play knight f3 is white can play bishop f3. The bishop's really good on f3, as you can see. And then white's knight can go to e2, protecting and attacking. And then the knight has access to f4. So knight h3 to f4 or knight e2 to f4. Uh, bishop on f3 is really strong. It seems like both players know this position because they're both playing relatively quickly. And these are the engine moves and so forth. Karen will join us shortly. Um, yeah, I, I've covered the odd rounds, one, three, five, seven, and nine. Those are the rounds that are in the evening when I'm awake. Um, and then she has other people covering the day rounds, two, four, six, and eight. This is the last round. So this is it. <clears throat> And um, I wasn't sure if this was the last round, but I talked to Kenny Loggins, who half of you haven't heard of, and he said, this is it. And then half of you don't get that. So only like 20% of you get that joke. And I'm being nice, probably less than 20%. There's the director that's always hanging around. He's always around Dina's board, very suspicious. And there he goes. That's right. Danger zone phrasing. That is incorrect. Kenny Loggins did not do please come to Boston. That's Dave Loggins, and they're not related. But thanks for playing, Dankle. We have some parting gifts for you for confusing two people whose last name is Loggins. Sorry I know stuff like that. I'm, I'm the only streamer who would ever know that. Also, Karen knows that. I, we were talking about Kenny Loggins, and he said he also did the song, Please Come to Boston. And I said, that's Dave Loggins, who's not related. Oh, okay. So Dina made a move the engine doesn't like, knight f3. It wants her to play bishop f3 and then knight e2. Um, after knight f3, the engine seriously prefers black after d takes c3. Obviously, the bishop on f3 would have been a monster. So now the bishop on e2, eh, not, not so good. If knight f3 was a good move, it probably would have been fine before bishop e2. So bishop e2 was the right move because the bishop wants to go to f3. I'm not familiar with this line, but I can read the engine analysis. I learned how to do it watching St. Louis Chess Club broadcasts. In, in, in one position about three moves ago, I saw Canty's arm. All I saw was his arm. I knew it was Canty's arm. Twitch is broken. It says we have zero viewers on both streams. Did you refresh the channel page? I did not. Let's see if that fixes Twitch. Always refresh. No, it still says we have zero after refreshing. Yeah, everybody says it's showing zero for them. Okay. Twitch is broken. So uh, it looks like Dina prepared this game with Kate Perry because she's always taking her coat off and putting it back on. So she must be hot and then cold. And then she's yes and then no, and so forth. 
see somebody you guys have heard of, Kate Perry. Looks like her, I thought her opponent was away from the board, but I can see his arm. Well. No, they just like this camera angle better. Oh, the, okay. the audience insisted. So, but there was the first guy. Mm -hmm. the tester. We've had two people who didn't want the camera on. One, we just had no camera, and one, we had the diagonal. How's everybody doing? Hey, Donkle. So they played a Vienna, and which is weird because you didn't show up yet. I thought it would wait for you. So here's the Vienna. In this position, do you know what move white makes to make it a Vienna? No, I don't know. Oh, knight c3. Okay. Then they played a line that I'm barely familiar with. When I was a kid, everybody played knight f3. Mm -hmm. That was every game ever played ever. Now they play queen f3. And I was at the World Open last year, and somebody played f5. So I thought that was the main line. And then Dina played D3. This is all the main line. And in this position, white's supposed to play bishop E2, bishop F3 with a nice bishop, and then put the knight on E2. But in this position, Dina didn't play bishop F3. She played knight F3, which the engine does not like. Now, Donald's thinking, because he probably doesn't know this move. And now he can take on C3, and the engine prefers black. The one advantage knight f3 has over bishop f3 is she might worry her opponent with a move like knight g5. Sharp. Mm -hmm. And he obviously doesn't know the move knight f3 because I think it's not true. Okay, okay, okay. So this is the first time he's having a big thing during the game. Yay, thanks for the raid, WGM Adriana. Hooray. And thanks, Aaron Percival, for the sub. Yeah, I just did okay yesterday, Donkel, in poker. I won a little money, but it, you know, wasn't what I wanted to win. Yeah, I didn't didn't know the Vienna. Did you tell um, chat that we know Donald? Yes. Yeah, Donald um, was a student of Ben's and also attended um, camp at our chess club. And I know his mom. She's really nice. She plays chess too. And so forth. I think they're um, from the Charlotte area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's the point of queen f3? It attacks the knight on e4. But now the queen is putting pressure on g7, defending the e pawn, instead of sitting back here doing Vishwa nothing. Donkle says, you, I've never won money at, at a live MTT. I've cashed a few times. That um, A couple of times I cashed, it didn't go into Hendon Mob because it was just some little daily tournaments, and those don't always make it in. But, um, yeah, some of these tournaments were um, pretty challenging. One, I saw Berkey wandering around and Landon Tice. Yay, one bit. Thank you. And I played with Mike Matisau. I, I mean, I had all these different pros that I played with. Thanks, Weak Vegetables, for subscribing. I think I did pretty well. So I just need to study a bit more, though. Not just a bit. <laughs> I need to study a lot. Let me see if any of the top boards have finished, because usually there's some quick draws in the last round. Thank you, Luke, Jim. Yeah, I had a blast. Now we have no quick draws on the top boards. Not yet. I would be surprised if this game's not a quick draw. Those guys both like to draw. They were born to draw. I can't really see. Hey, WGM Adriana. I can't really see them. Dina's chat very well, so I might get two going over here somehow. Mm -hmm. And then I can talk to them, too. It's hard to see it. Or I could do it on my phone. If this won't work. Or on that computer. 
Yeah, maybe I can see it over there. But so many computers. <laughs> Yay, Weak Vegetables gifted a sub to Adriana. Hooray. All right, let me see if I can do it. It's way back here. I'll pull it forward. Let's see. I was hoping I brought my mouse. And I felt like that I did. That's a mouse. Well, that goes with this computer. Oh, yeah. Let me go look. I thought we got it. We have like two ring lights and then another, a box light and several cameras and several laptops and several monitors and microphones and phones. Well, and then we have hidden laptops that are facing the other way. My laptop's not usually down here. But I needed to do something. So I think I live in the wrong world because I saw that. I've been seeing that for a couple of days. Yeah, I don't even know. And then I turned the sound on and then I wished I hadn't. I didn't understand then, what was going and on. And then <laughs> there's another video that's just like it where it's like the same thing. But I think that video is making fun of the first video. Oh, it's a very make, similar video. This might make a noise. But that's, but that's, I can't, I, 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 I. Well, I I'm, I'm too old for the internet. I don't really understand it. Right. Okay, so black play D takes C3, which is correct. There we go. Better on this. I'm going to have to go get my So mouse. if white had played bishop F3 previous to this, as was pointed out in my chat by the gawking rabble, white could play bishop takes C6 check, giving black tripled pawns, and then play knight E2 or knight F3 and continue. But now the bishop on e2 isn't very active. Black is up a pawn. Black can play knight b4 or knight d4. Bishop c5 if black white castles would be with check. So then we, right now, bishop c5 would run into queen takes g7. So th this was this was already a mistake from Dina knight f3. And uh, she already has a worse position. Mm -hmm. Tough break. So are the people in the back or okay to be on camera i guess so barton that looks like ethan a little bit in the green shirt mm -hmm. but only a little bit i can't tell it's too fuzzy <laughs> we know a few people in the tournament But yeah, it's hard to tell because it's not in focus. Yeah, so it's probably fine there. You can't even tell who it is. <laughs> Charlotte, not that far from Atlanta. How I could forgotten now how far it it's is. It's between four and four and a half hour drive. Yeah. It's about 210 miles. Maybe a little more. Yeah, it's um Closer to the for us to go to, to the casino in North Carolina, Cherokee, than to go to Charlotte. She already gave like a mild head shake, knowing that she did something wrong. Mm. You did you tell Chad that you're going to be in Charlotte in November? I did. I didn't tell him today, but I told him the last two uh, days. Yeah, Ben's going to be working it there i'm not, are you doing game analysis i'm not sure what you're doing i'm doing like a little of everything a little of everything yeah like uh lecture and blitz and game analysis and spinning in a circle and then they're making me play in a blitz tournament so i have to play over the board chess what did i do mm -hmm. well in one of the tournaments recently john bartholomew was the guy who had the job that i'm having and he had to play in like blitz or rapid or something. And truth hurts. <laughs> he did not do well. God damn. I mean, because I expected John to do pretty well, but you know, when you don't play over the board and then everybody you play is like 12 years old, it, it's it's hopeless. We're talking Pancake Gremlin. We're talking about the tournament right after Thanksgiving. Yeah, there's a Thanksgiving tournament in Charlotte. Um, and I'll be the guest GM there doing stuff. Like I do with the National Elementary and the National Open, you know, game analysis and playing blitz and signing autographs, taking selfies, mm -hmm. giving a lecture, simul, you know, whatever they ask me to do. They already wrote what I'm supposed to do, but I, I forgot it immediately. 
the only thing I paid attention to was the most rewarding part, as Mark would say. Yeah. Simpsons quote. Uh -uh. The most rewarding part was when they paid me my money. I, th I think Dr. Nick said that. Dr. Nick is a great character, by the way, that you don't hear a lot about. Now let me check out Dana's chat. Hey, Charlie Fleet, how's it going? I still can't see it. So I'm, I need to get my mouse. So I'm just going to go get it. I guess mm -hmm. I won't be here. Hey, it, wow, we got 20 subs just now as you as you got up. Uh, Thanks, Ankum. Yay. Hey, can you bring me uh, a tea from the fridge? Yeah. Thank you. You're the best. Yay, 20 subs. I used to like the sound of 20 subs. We turned off the sound noise, so we don't. I, I just like looking at it now. Yay, thanks for 20 subs. You're the best. So Dina's choking on her own rage. Whenever you play chess, you're always choking on your own rage at some point. But this is early in the game. So that means later in the game, she'll play better. Her opponent will make a mistake that he'll choke on his own rage and so forth. That's how chess goes. I've known Naraditsky for over 10 years. My greatest feat in chess wasn't becoming a grandmaster. It wasn't becoming an IM. It wasn't winning chess tournaments. It wasn't winning $14,000 one week in St. Louis. Those, those are okay. My greatest feat in chess is one nobody believes. So you guys believe the other stuff. You can look it up on the internet. Okay, you can like, okay, he's a grandmaster. Okay. My greatest feat in chess is when I met Luke Van Whaley, I was taller than him. And if you know Luke Van Whaley, that's not believable, but it's still true. That's that's how long ago I met him. Nobody believes me, but it's true. Yeah. All you got to do to be taller than somebody who's like 6'5 is to meet them when they're like 11. Then, then you have a chance. Yeah, I've known Von Whaley since he was 13 or 14. When he was 15, he was taller than me. When he was 13 or 14, I was taller. <clears throat> Luke Von Whaley is one of the five tallest GMs. And the reason I mention that is Naraditsky's pretty tall but I've never been taller than him. And I met him when he was a kid and I played him when he was a kid and we drew. That's the only game we've played that's rated. And even then he was taller than me. I've never been taller than Naraditsky. Even when he was born, he was, he was taller than me. Okay, so Dina already looks quite upset. Yeah, she's like, is this tournament over yet? That's what she's, that's, that's the internal thought process. And she played knight g5. Because, you know, if you're going to play knight f3, you might as well play knight g5. Otherwise, you know, I could have played bishop f3. <clears throat> now, she's going to get bishop f3 in uh, by hook or by crook. And then maybe she'll get the two bishops. Maybe the f pawn and the c pawn are weak. The engine doesn't like it. But what does the engine know? Oh, wait a minute. The engine knows everything. All right, never mind. Naraditsky is about 6'2". Uh, Kramnik and Von Whaley are both about 6'5". Uh, Malakov is really tall. Uh, Vladimir Malakov, I want to say, although his first name might not be Vladimir. Then I'm, I'm wrong. He's also quite tall. Obviously, the Dutch and Croatian players are tall. You think the, the chessboard's too small for you? Talbert? It's the internet, so people are complaining. Can you make the live feed small and the chessboard on left big? Wait, you want the, the, the actual chessboard small and the 2D you know representation of that board to be big. That's like That's there's an explosion outside your window, and instead of looking at your window, you're watching on TV. I which interpreted that. We, we did that when we the, the ball was outside of our room. And I was watching the ball on TV instead of looking out of my window in Las Vegas. That giant spherical ball was right outside our window. But I would see it on TV, and I'm like, I'm not going to look out the window. The window's over there. So. Mm. 
live feed is blurry and low frame rate. Man, guys like to complain. It's round nine. I interpreted it differently. I thought mm -hmm. they said make the live stuff smaller to make room for the board to be bigger. That was yeah, they want this smaller and this bigger. Yeah. And that's oh, why okay. I said you want the actual board oh, okay. smaller and the thing represents it bigger. Well, it's because they can't really, it's hard to see on the actual board what's going on for me. The contrast isn't that great. I'm just looking out for like Naroditsky and Kansi. I don't really care about the other <laughs> stuff. Okay, let's see if any of the top boards have drawn yet. I'm shocked they haven't drawn yet. What kind of last round is this? I've never been so angry. Do we know any of those players right there? Like in that orange colored uh, shirt. See, he's black and his opponent's white. That's usually a high board because I saw two grandmasters playing there la last night. Right. So let me see. It's not Naroditsky. It could be. Yeah, I think that's. Well, wait, Gus. Yeah, that's that's Gus Houston. He already got a G an IM norm, mm -hmm. and he's playing on board two, and that's Salinas. Salinas is the GM with white. In the background, I'm pretty sure that's Ethan with the green shirt. He's. I haven't seen him. In that a could while. be any nerdy kid. I know, but I haven't seen him in a while. Nerd. So he's taller. <laughs> There's no draws in the round's been going on for 45 minutes. I'm very impressed. Usually in the last round, people are chicken. No, the future GM 100, there's something wrong with the viewer count on Twitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Twitch is broken. We don't know. I retired before Vichy was born. I'm much older than Vichy. Also, Vichy isn't crushing everyone, but yeah. He's not as bad as he plays. It's not that Ben is retiring. Ben is retired. Exactly. <laughs> I retired before you were born. See, the thing is, he's slow on the uptake because his name's Tortuga. Yes. Yeah. I don't know that. Huh? He he's he's the turtle. <clears throat> so it was the engine line. The engine wants black to not hang his bishop for nothing now that's an engine so it's saying queen d7 and queen e7 are equally good i mean it looks like queen d7 makes more sense why are you blocking your bishop so to me queen d7 makes more sense mm -hmm. now one of the whoa Wait, what happened he played a weird move <laughs> i'm not saying it's a bad move i'm saying it's a weird move okay Okay, now one of the negatives of playing knight g5 is we're giving away d4, so black can play knight d4 more easily. Instead of defending his bishop, um, Donald followed one of my rules, always retreat, and then some. Bishop g8, first played in the game, God versus damn. And the engine still says black is better, but that's a very strange square for the bishop. This indicates... Black has no interest in giving up the two bishops. Black says, I want my bishops. You can't have them. So the next move, if it was Black's move, which it's not, but if it was Black's move, Black would play knight to d4, threatening knight c2 check. Also, knight takes bishop is probably good for Black because white has to play king takes. Mm -hmm. That's probably not so good for white. So was there a better move that Black... The engine wants play? to just develop its queen, castle, king, queen side, and be up a pawn. Um, but there's nothing wrong with Bishop G8. It's just a weird move. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, he, he's, he's, he's younger. So he has a, a lot of, uh, you know, whatever the word is. <clears throat> Moxie. He's, he's got, he's got a lot of, uh, uh, you know, independent thought. Good spot. I said Moxie, but that got rejected. Dina doesn't like when her opponent plays original ideas. She just thinks that they're stupid. She's like, how can my opponent play Bishop G8 and what kind of move is that? That's what she's thinking. Also, she's thinking Arby's. That's why she's having a bad tournament. I don't know that she thinks it's there's it's stupid as much as she's she wonders sometimes like 
it's more like the mood's a mystery. So I have a serious question. If anybody can answer it, I I would I'd be glad to hear it. The the internets says Donald Johnson is an FM, and it also says his FIDE rating is 2144. So please explain, as we say in bridge. Those two things don't add up. So sometimes people are FMs because they win a title in a tournament. They play in the Pan Am youth under 16, and then they get automatic title or something. So that's that's what I'm thinking, because you can't, well, state champion doesn't matter because states are U.S. Chess Federation. Well, he, he wouldn't have lost that much rating. Right. He wouldn't be 2300 feet a right, and then be 2144 feet a unless he was. Then that answers that question. Mm -hmm. Right. But that's a lot of rating points to lose if it's the case. I mean, he's a teenager, so it's unlikely he was 2300 feet and now he's 2144. But it is possible. So, you know, what do I know? He lost 100 ELO in the past three months, says the original Black Pepper. Okay, that explains it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Dankel comparing apples to oranges. <laughs> he must be a vegan. He probably knows it does. Somebody good. says his maximum was 2240. Yeah, that, that's not FM. So I'm still confused. He went on tilt. Mm -hmm. Donald is between 16 and 20 years old. That's all I know for sure. I don't know which age he is, but he's between those two. <laughs> he's FM because he works on the radio. Uh, the engine move for white is either E6, confusing the audience, or short castle, confusing nobody. Yeah, he might be under 18. I've lost track of how old he is. After having a five-minute discussion about how his rating is very low, somebody said, is his rating the same as Dina's? You know, I, I've never been so angry. Didn't, yeah. This shit keeps coming off. Yay, GM Thomas is reading with a party of 53. Somebody give GM Thomas a shout out. Oh, you did give him a shout out. Yay. Okay, thank, good job. Thank you, GM Thomas. Let me just uh, get the right mouse. Scroll up for a moment. Well, black's up a pawn. Black has knight d4 coming, which is quite annoying. Um, <clears throat> black's king isn't any worse off than white's king, both on e1 and e8. Black can quite easily castle queenside very shortly. But the game's very complicated. It's not clear what either player should do, what move order they should do it in. There's a lot of options. So even though the engine says black is plus one, I mean, white could be plus one in two moves. It's too complicated for humans. Mm -hmm. Still checking for quick draws. No draws on the top boards. I've never been so shocked. Also, one norm I didn't mention, Michelle Katharina, she needs a win, I think, to get WGM norm. And she's playing white against Alonzo Zapata. And she's going all in. So if she was playing poker, she'd be all in right now. She castled queenside and played E4, F4, G4. And then she went, rawr. Zapata has a serious case of old. So she has a chance. 
but sometimes old guys are sneaky. Yeah. Okay, she played crazy Bishop H5 check. This game is already pretty nutty. Pancake Gremlin wants to know if Deepak can get a GM norm. He cannot. Just so no. win in like six out of nine won't do it. No. Yeah. So G6 is the obvious move and correct. And the engine also indicates after King D7, the position is equal. So therefore, he'll play King E7. No. It's sort of crazy, this game, which is really good for the audience. The tournament's in Charlotte. Is she in a kid? Um, Vienna. Mm -hmm. Not kid. I'm trying to think of a position that looks less like a King's Indian than this, and it doesn't exist. <laughs> so if you said, is it a King's Indian, you're banned. D3 instead of D4. Black just played G6 on move 12. The bishop's on G8. White has no F-pawn. Very suspicious. Online Encounter has a little bit of analysis. He says, every strategy book ever... Get your pieces out. Get your king safe. Don't move the same piece twice. This game, we're not having any of that. No. No, this <laughs> game, the players are playing their own way. Now, Dina can't win any money this tournament or get any norms, so she can just have fun. She can get a fun game, very tactical and interesting, and the, the audience will be very appreciative. Maybe they won't get 95 on the, on the Richter scale, but maybe they'll get 94 on the Richter-Rosser scale. So, looks like King's Gambit. It's very similar to a King's Gambit because it is a King's Gambit, except White played Knight C3 on move two. And then White played F4. So, very similar to a King's Gambit. Technically, it could transpose, but that's only technical. I mean, the only move is bishop f3. There is no other move. So if she plays another move, that's going to be interesting. If she plays some kind of crazy sacrifice. I don't see a crazy sacrifice. I see really crazy sacrifices, but not like a normal crazy one. Hey, McCall X, how's it going? But that's what she's looking at. She's looking at something crazy. And then she'll probably decide it's too crazy and play bishop f3. Whoa! She played crazy sacrifice. Oh, she did? Yep. Totally unsound. Yay. Knight <laughs> takes h7. Hooray. Andrew Jane can't believe it. He's like, what, what's happening? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's Andrew. What, what's going on? <laughs> that's Andrew standing there. Yeah, Andrew's like, wait, what? Knight takes h7. What am I missing? <laughs> He's never been so fascinated. He, he gave a funny look, too. He scratched his head. Like, what kind of move is that? <laughs> He's starting to look like his dad. Wow, crazy knights takes H7. That's crazier than crazy Joe Devola. Wow, that's saying something. If if only what's his name was here to hear that remark, whatever his name is. Who, who's the crazy guy in our stream? Seinfeld. I don't know. Yeah, he just uh, lawful lawful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was crazier than crazy. <laughs> Wait, another that looks like Yorgiev. That looks like his stomach. He walks like your give too. Knight takes h7. See, now if Dina was a was a show person, she would stare into the camera now. That's what I would do if I was like I look at the camera like. <laughs> God damn, this game makes no sense. So the engine says uh black is just up a piece for nothing by playing bishop takes h7, 
Bishop takes G6 check, King D7. And Black's king just walks away and Black's up a piece. White has no pieces left to attack with. So I, there's, there's no pieces. So you can't get the bishop on C1 involved somehow? I mean, bishop G5, bishop G5, bishop E7. So. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are going to come look at the game confused. Like knight h7, say what? <laughs> we want knight h7 to be good, but wanting the move to be good isn't isn't good enough. Well, I hope it somehow works. <laughs> we need some magics. <laughs> Dina is exhausted, but don't call her Shirley. I know. I'm. I am very certain she is tired. That's right, trying to learn. You got it. This if, game, if this on. was the World Chess Championship, this would be the greatest thing that's ever happened in human history. Right. Trying to learn says this game will make sense <clears throat> sense if you guys start donating bits and stuff. And even I don't believe that. And I believe anything. <laughs> 700 point rating difference. Her rating is 200 points higher, not 700. Heebie jeebie, I was in a few tournaments in the World Series of Poker. Is, you know, there's hundreds of tournaments. I was in, I cashed in three tournaments. I only made it day two main event, which was disappointing to me. But um, probably it was considered good for my first time. Dina's like, I'm sacrificing, but I don't believe it, but I'm having fun. Oh, here comes the director who stands too close. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I can't look at that. I'm not high rated enough. And it kept moving. He probably saw the vibe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I, I have a funny story about Rudy. I have more than one. Yeah. When when I was at the Nationals and we were waiting for like the closing ceremony, mm -hmm. I was sitting with two or three directors, like Hader and Rudy and somebody else. And the discussion was. Somebody complained about Rudy and wanted him like kicked out of the like, not be a director anymore. The term was like ending, yeah. but they filed a complaint against Rudy. Oh, they did. Yeah, he can be grouchy, but he was nice when I saw him. Uh oh, somebody said board one was an eleven move draw. Let's see. I agree. Board one has been drawn between Joe and and Bruzon, so probably they tie for first unless something happens on another board. Naroditsky is never going to give his opponent a draw. Naroditsky needs to win to tie for first, if that. And his opponent needs a draw to get an IM norm. So Daniel's never going to give his opponent a draw. Daniel's 300 points higher rated also. That's funny that Hater was the one talking to hate, him. Hate, 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 hate. Because Hater gets so many complaints. Hater told me of all directors in the U.S. <laughs> Chess Federation, he has the most complaints against him. He told me that. So. <laughs> Yeah, he's a good director. <laughs> His, at, you know, attitude could be better. I mean, when your name is Hater, that's what you get. <laughs> Man, yeah, I had so much fun in Vegas. But, you know, I got into it with the floor that time. I guess I could have been addicted. Mm -hmm. Karen was swearing at the floor. I cussed out the floor. I did. What happened was uh, Karen folded her jacks and the guy went into a long diatribe about how to play jacks. And eventually Karen's like, just shut the F up to, to the guy. That's not what happened. <laughs> oh, wait, that happened yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell my story, maybe. Let me tell my story real quick. If there's a move, I'll stop. You're going to confuse the audience because they won't know half of what you're talking about. So I was playing in the World Series of Poker and as some of you may not know, that's a bunch of different tournaments. And so we were there for 10 days, been played in some tournaments as well. And anyway, um, so what happened was I was, I was at, we were about to go on break in one of my tournaments and there's this thing called color up where you eliminate the lowest denomination of the chips. <clears throat> Every few levels you color up, it could get rid of so we were getting rid of the black chips, which were the hundred dollar 
chips. And I stayed and one other guy stayed <clears throat> to watch the color up and everybody else split because there's long lines for the bathrooms. I wanted to take a picture of my chips after the color up and I like to watch the color up. Well, I wasn't really paying too close attention. I was waiting on the dealer to, to give the cards and to determine who was going to get the extra money. And she started giving out thousand, uh, thousand, was there a move? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he took the oh, 97. Okay. Well, that's that's the move. That was the move, yeah. yeah. So then, so she was giving out, she's supposed to give out $500 chips and she gave out, there's another move. I like the way she doesn't believe in her sacrifice, <laughs> but she, anyway, she's like, this is no good, but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> Why do you think she doesn't believe? I can look at her and see. Oh, she's well, like, this, she changed she's like, this is no good, but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> I like that attitude. Fuck it. And she's like, fuck this tournament. Yeah, fuck everybody. What do what I'm I sacking do? everything. <laughs> yeah, you can tell she doesn't believe it. She's like, I don't know. I'll get some checks maybe. All right, anyway, back to my story. So I'm sitting there. And the deal, the floor is the, basically like a tournament director. He comes by and he, and he sees that she's giving out the wrong chips and he starts yelling at the de the dealer. And and then he starts yelling at me. I said, what are you guys just gonna, just gonna sit there and not say anything? And I'm like, don't, and he was yelling at me. And I'm like, don't you fucking yell at me. It's not my fucking job. I'm just, <laughs> and then he goes, I'm not yelling. And, and then, so then it kind of became, and then he backed it off. He said he was, I'm not yelling. He didn't really say he was sorry exactly. Then later when he wandered by, he made a joke about it. I, I want yelling. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. But I guess he could have evicted me. I want to thank the original Black Pepper for uh, 20 subs oh my during that story. Yeah, sorry my story went so long. 20 subs. You had to wait on, wait on your thanks. Thank you, original Black Pepper. You give lots of subs every stream. The original Black Pepper also gave 20 subs um in in dina's stream yay wow the original black pepper is great thank you anyway it's very stressful to be a tournament director or the floor as they call it or a chess tournament director so i had sympathy for him i, I didn't stay mad at him so i'd like to point out for the audience if black plays king d7 he's winning because he's up a piece if he plays bishop g6 it's actually a perpetual check queen takes and it's a draw King d7, queen f5, and everywhere you go, I have one check. So bishop takes is actually a draw. Queen takes, perpetual check. After king d7, there is no perpetual check. There's hardly any checks. Then my king just walks out here and I'm piece up. So king d7 is winning. King e7 is losing to bishop g5 check. And bishop takes g6 is drawing. That's the way chess should be. Wow. We have one move that wins, one move that draws, and one move that loses. And there's three legal moves. Hooray, go chess. <laughs> Wait, no, which move loses? this? King e7, because then bishop g5 check wins the queen. Oh, okay. He, he won't play king e7. Well, that's what I was saying earlier about can't we get the bishop involved? Yeah, he's going to play king d7, mm -hmm. and then the king runs away, and then the black wins. And then wipes down a piece with, with like no checks. Does White even have a pawn for the piece? Three, six, four, five. So after King D7, Black's up a piece for a pawn, and Black has an easy escape here. After Bishop takes, it's just an obvious perpetual. Queen just checks every move. That Dina might not want a perpetual, so she might do something like Castle and play for the win down a piece. That's what I would hope anyway. Okay, he played King D7 since that wins, so good idea. I can hear Dina's analysis now after the game. He plays bishop g8, king d7. How can he get away with this? And the answer is because he's up a piece. But they are strange moves, I must say. <laughs> yeah, we know Twitch is a little bit broken. But hopefully it'll fix itself. Darn, I was hoping for at least a draw here. 
and we have the same number of uses Nemo and Botez. <laughs> Zero. But somehow Gotham Chess escaped and has 6,900. <laughs> somehow he has a lot of views. Yeah, that is pretty strange. He's like, now what do I do? She might throw an E6 check because it's fun. It's it's one of the better moves. Try to get to the Black King. And he thought the last elbow was strong. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I was hoping for a miracle. All we need is a miracle. <clears throat> Probably Karen. You know, Karen's going to Disney World this mm -hmm. Saturday. So for reasons I'll never understand, the engine says Bishop F7 is the best move. I understand that. The second best move is not a move any of you would ever think of ever. And if you suggested every legal move on the board, this would be one of the last ones. I hope anyway. The engine claims the second best move is king to d1. I guess that defends c2 and allows white to play rook e1 with initiative. King d1 is the second best move. Very suspicious. Yeah, from a human perspective, queen h3 has to be the move. It threatens queen takes check, bishop takes check, and bishop takes h7. So if you're a human, you have to play queen h3. Otherwise, you're just down a piece. Yeah. Problem is, you know, if, if white does play bishop takes h7, his bishop's pinned. But I think you have to play queen h3 to get some compensation, practical compensation. The original Black Pepper doesn't understand the game, and there's always a reasonable explanation for that. He didn't give enough subs. The more subs you donate, the more you understand the game. So technically, at this point in time, Original Black Pepper understands the game better than anybody. So, and he still doesn't understand it. I also don't understand it, but it's fun. Bishop F7. Problem is, in the long run, you know, I'm going to play king here, king here, and then I'm up a piece. Then I just develop my pieces, bishop here, knight here. I'm up a piece. There's like almost no compensation. I've seen very little of Kansi and Naroditsky this round. Very suspicious. <clears throat> Maybe they took buys. They're playing? No, they're playing. Yeah. Mm. Yay, original Black Pepper gifted a sub to understand the game better. He gave it to I don't get this game. Very good. <laughs> Probably one of his fake accounts. <laughs> Donating subs to himself. <laughs> He's got, what, 30 or 50 fake accounts. <laughs> would be funny, though. <laughs> Dina's thinking now, I hate chess. <laughs> when you're a grandmaster like me, you learn that early on. <laughs> He's like, this game doesn't make any sense and I'm playing it.
do FIDE has different rules and rating distribution for women? Um, what? Uh, no. I guess that's the answer. I don't know what they mean by rating distribution. Look, original black pepper sub to I don't have other accounts. Okay. <laughs> Very suspicious. Thank you, original black pepper. That's hilarious, too. He's spending money on jokes. <laughs> One time I got mad at Lawful Lawful in a different channel and told mm -hmm. him to fuck off and and he uh, found some account that was close to that name of fuck off and he gifted him so. If she doesn't play Queen H3, I'm going to do a, an analysis of Queen H3 and find out why it's bad. Well, the viewer counts messed up Mr. Funny Play. It looks like for only some people, uh, some channels. Jokes are expensive. Come on, play Queen H3. I want to see what's wrong with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Gotham Chess has his count. Poker Go, Hassan, Sweet Anita, etc. Mainly etc. Do you guys watch any non-chess channels? Laughter is the best medicine. Thanks for subbing again, Original Black Pepper. Yay, Original Black Pepper. I think Pepper. Otez actually was correct because she has zero viewers, so Otez. Yeah, there are a few that say zero, but not all of them. So it's unclear. Nemo says zero. Botez. Violet Mystery Forever. Only watch streams with zero viewers. That's correct. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I watch those non-chess channels as well, like Gotham Chess. I'm going to put my glasses on see what happens. Somebody in the chat is claiming Dina's sister streams, and it's not chess. Hmm. It says Risto Terra. I didn't know that. What does she stream? Mm -hmm. I didn't know she had a sister. Yeah, I think it's the Belenkaya. Or something like that. I haven't really seen the stream that though. You watch some musicians, including Lord Graham. She banned the word chess on her stream. Good, good. Man, there was a musician I saw on here one time. I wish I could remember. I think I've had, I think I follow him. She doesn't know what she streams either. She used to stream on this channel. We have viewer counts. Yay. We have 266 Yay. viewers on Dina's channel and 208 on my channel. I mean, Karen's channel. Go channels. Still more than Botez and Nemo. I follow so many people. I guess that's it. I don't know who that was. <clears throat>
why is Dina's timer black? I can see it flowing. I guess it, well, yeah, I guess it is kind of pale. Okay, moves. Yeah, I, I've gotten a little confused. <laughs> yeah, Botez is going to be doing some poker videos. Did you guys know it? And uh, she already has one. I haven't gone to see it yet. She started a new poker YouTube channel. Somebody said Botez is doing a sub battle against a non chess channel. Right now? That's what they said. Uh. Oh, yeah. Aladdin Sane said that. Yeah, I haven't seen the new channel either, but I can't wait to see it. I love poker. She's going to, I think she'll do a lot to popularize and get more people interested in poker. It's a really fun game. A lot of chess people play, you know, poker as well. It's a fun game. What happened with Magnus? Yeah, um, CL Smith, she cashed. She she made it to day four, but I don't really know. Do you know how the Botez did? I think she won 25000 25000 Yeah, she did great. She did better than me. Yeah, she did great. Um, and she said she's going to start putting a lot more of her time and energy into some poker playing poker, both tournaments and cash. Queen H3. Yep. I can tell she's going to play Queen H3. <laughs> yeah, that's All right, let's good. see here. So the engine wants to sacrifice the exchange with Bishop G6. And the second best move is Knight D4, which defends the pawn on, F, on F5. Okay, so this is my favorite engine line ever. <laughs> After Knight D4... If white takes, okay, Karen, what's the engine move for black here? I don't know. I can't see it. Uh, let's see. Only an engine would play this move. No human would ever play oh, it. Oh, I was trying to find the movie. I don't know. Yeah, King C6. Oh, okay. That's the engine move. That's not good. And then, it, then it says that black's winning because this is pinned. And I'm threatening knight c2 check. That's so if you stop knight c2 check, I'll play like queen e7 then take. It stops bishop takes f5 check, so it just moves the king out of the way. Yeah. But there's no checks. The king is safe. It feels vulnerable there just because it's out. Now, the, the correct way to play according to the engine is to sacrifice the exchange, since we're already up a piece, and then move the queen to the e file, queen e7 or queen e8, or play knight to d4. Mm -hmm. And then the engine really hates uh, White's position. Bishop G7 is the threat. Take this, Knight D4, yeah, checkmate, so forth. Yeah. But that's all super sharp and complicated. So who knows what it'll do? Yeah, Queen H3 puts the test to the opponent. But knight d4 and bishop takes g6 are both good. Yeah, she's having a rough tourney. Yeah, but this game's exciting. Yeah. How exciting chess. It get exciting. Let's see if any of the other games have finished. We had a draw on board one. Hey, have you heard? And he did take on G6. I'm oh, sorry. Yep, no other games are finished, just board one.
So now they both have five. No, she has six pawns. So she has a rook and a pawn for a bishop and a knight, but her position is not very good. The two pieces really crush the rook here. But it's exciting. Time for more tea. So another thing black can do other than queen e7 is queen e8 with the idea that if white castles, then we have bishop c5 check and the queen's hanging on h8. So queen e8 still lets the bishop move out somewhere with, with check if white keeps the king on a dark square. Knight d4 is also a very logical attack for any knight c2 check. Mm -hmm. Very good original black pepper. That is correct. Any thoughts on Dina's smart blazer? It's a smart blazer. That's more of a Karen question. I mean, I'm not a fashion thing person. <laughs> I know she said it's real cold in the room. Karen's cold just looking at the room. That's how cold it is. Yeah, the room is always cold. Although these guys here, they're, they both have short sleeve shirts on. They seem fine. This guy has shorts on. Uh, very suspicious. Yeah. It's, a, it's always cold. And those guys are tied for first. That doesn't bode well for Karen. I'm yawning a little bit. <laughs> she wanted me to meet her for like an hour. I thought you were referring to yourself. <laughs> doesn't bode well for Karen. <laughs> Oh, that's more of an Ali Rosa question. That's that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, is he still pursuing fashion, I guess? Who isn't? No, Ali Rosa. Exactly. Wait, what? Come on, give a funny look into the camera. <laughs> That would be funny. Is this as bad of an evaluation a position as the evaluation bar says? It's exactly as bad as the evaluation bar says. Yeah. Yeah, black's pieces are way too strong for white's rook. And white's king isn't very good, and c2 is weak. Black has the two bishops. But you know, there's you know there's there's fighting chances. There's uh, you know materials uh, different and such. It's a confusing position. But so far, Black's played well. I mean, G six, Bishop H seven. King d7, bishop g6 for all the best moves. Let's see if anything's happening in the other games. Go other games. Uh, let's see. Engine says board two is equal. Board three is slightly better for Danya. 
Wood 4 is clearly better for more of the body, etc. Deepak is slightly worse against Georgiev. And no other games are finished, just board one. It's a real fighting last round. They're fighting for a sandwich. Yeah, I think you can see all the games on chess.com slash events. And he played queen e7. That's one of the engine moves. If it's black's move, black could just play queen takes e5 check and have two pieces for a rook. And there's no there's no pawns or anything. So black has a big majority on the queen side, past a pawn, potential past b pawn. Oh, nice. They have their live, they have a command, live board. Mm -hmm. We should have done that. This is still theory, but maybe not. So if, if, if white wants to keep her pawn on e5, she has to play bishop f4. Also possible is d4, which just hangs the d-pawn. That's the engine second move. I think she'll play bishop f4. I think you have to try to keep your e-pawn. Yeah. Black can play simple moves, as somebody pointed out, rook e8, king c8, bishop g7, and just have two pieces for a rook. White's king is no great shakes either. That king's not going to be safe. Black has a lot of pieces. The last match today, um, uh, Dino lost in round eight, and now this is the actual last match. Go Braves. Agreed. I haven't been following it. What's going on? They're first in the National League. All Star game just happened. Oh. And the National League won after losing nine All Star games in a row. Yeah, I don't follow it, but I'm always happy to hear about it. Go Braves. In passing. <laughs> as long as you don't have to go to a game. Right. Where you go to see the full standings. You can go to charlottechesscenter.org and find the tournament and see standings there. Excuse me, just yawning. I feel bad. I don't think I'm going to go meet Karen. Do better before. <laughs> she's going out of town. She's she's having um, a lot of dental health issues. It's got her down. Like a bad friend. Yeah, I predict Bishop F4. She has to try to keep her E pawn. Does does our producer or anybody in Dina's chat know what Dina does from this tournament? If she's staying in the U.S., if she's flying off to some big tournaments, what's next for Dina? Yeah. Oh, okay. So the producer said she's uh, playing in the weekend tournament they have here starting tomorrow, and then uh, she's going to New York and L.A. to visit uh, friends and family. I guess mainly friends. Busy. I thought we were busy. Yay, we have a raid with a party of one. <clears throat> All right. Yay. Danya fan. DD Danya fan. Hmm. 
Okay. Oh goodness. <laughs> Danya does have too many draws. It's true. Danya's the best player in the tournament, but he draws a lot of his games. Yeah, I don't know. He'd win more if it was Hyper Bullet. Yeah, this is a tough situation that I've been in myself when you know you're losing and every move that you're analyzing loses and you have to pick the one that gives you the best chances. I hate when that happens. <clears throat> yeah, where is the uh, women's World Chess Championship going on. It's think... in two cities in China. They right. just moved from city one to city two. So I knew that a, Like a three-day break. Yeah, we haven't really followed it too much, but... Yeah, Li Tingqi is up three and a half, two and a half against Zhu Wenzhen. Oh, she is. One win, five draws. Yeah, all the chess world champions are from China. I don't know if Donald ever gets up. Yeah, his arm's still there. <laughs> Maybe he has a fake arm and he's leaving it there and walking around. We don't know. It's possible. I've never seen uh, Dina without any tea or, or or water. They got nothing. Yeah, Gus Houston already has an IM norm, and he's playing on board two for first place. So he is having a great tournament. That is correct. Let's see if any other results happened or anything interesting. Uh, let's see. Is anybody winning? It says equal, equal, equal. I demand winning. Robert Swa says, I heard Hans was going to get the wild card invite to the candidates. I don't know. That seems, I haven't heard that. You, you might have mean like a wild card invite to the World Cup, not to the candidates. There's a 0% chance he gets a wild card of the candidates, but World Cup 50-50. Although you were probably kidding anyway, but if you weren't, you were still wrong. Let's see. Is it Bishop F4 as I predicted 10 minutes ago? Or is she going to make me look that in front of my people? Good night, the original Black Pepper. No, you can't leave. You're my only hope. <laughs> More fake accounts. We appreciate it. No, she's going to castle. 
then she's like, man, castling sucks. Maybe I shouldn't castle. Well, she castled. That's one of the top two engine moves, the ship F4 in castles. Yeah, I don't know the difference between a blazer and a sports jacket. Usually I think of a sports jacket as being male for a, a guy and blazer maybe for either, but I don't really know. That's just my impression. Just the way the words are used. Hey, Big Daddy, how's it going? Blazer, blazes, equals sports, jacket, sports. So if it's 420 in the afternoon, you're wearing a blazer. Yeah. Because you're blazing it. Oh. Go, Big Daddy. Thanks for the one bit. going to do our beautiful emote. We have too many emotes. You'll never find it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, his moves are all good. Queen takes e5. Now he has a bishop and a knight for a rook with no compensation. And black has the excellent d4 square. Black's threatening queen takes queen and bishop c5 check. Just white doesn't really have anything for the two pieces for the rook. Black's position is also excellent. Hey, moving with, moving with Matt. You're from Atlanta too? Are you back here? He plays another engine move. Knight takes queen. Hmm. Big data sub. Yeah, I don't know. The, so the distinguishing feature of a blazer or the solid color and metal buttons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's got to be a blazer that she has on. That's thunder. Hope it doesn't cause us to have an outage. Um, well, if for some reason, because I'm hearing some thunder, you know, we crash because we lose power, you know, just give us a moment to try to get back on. Yeah, I thought it was a beautiful emote, Big Daddy. I got our um, YouTube editor to make to make that and a few others. Oh, you've never seen it? <laughs> We've had it a while. Really tough position for white. Black's just playing bishop c5 check. Knight's g4. Rook h8. God damn. And Black's pieces are all over white. Well, I'm still still trying to be hopeful. Man, Tortuga couldn't even give us one one bit. He tried. We couldn't do it. <laughs> Too slow. I think because of the space cookies or mm -hmm. no, no, maybe not. Yeah, Jeer won. That's right.
No, the opponent, I don't think, cared whether he was on camera. This the the viewers like this camera angle better. It's easier to see the pieces in the inner. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna have to say I, I agree that it's better. Yeah, the elbow is always good. <laughs> Plus, I can see other people in the room better. <clears throat> it's overall everything better. Yeah, but I've barely seen Canty at all. <laughs> no chess players nicknamed the elbow. Not yet. <laughs> if I ever make a comeback, that's going to be my nickname. My poker coach, I do group um, poker lessons through um, Jaka Coaching, and his nickname is The Toilet. I forgot now why, though. <laughs> the Toilet. <laughs> I'm still hoping something good happens. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If I was white, I'd probably play d4 just to stop bishop c5 check. But I wouldn't be very confident in my position. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, Donald never gets up from the board. <laughs> Which is not typical for him. I've seen him get up from the board plenty in his career. Yeah, he moves around a lot, but he's older now, too. Yeah, go Dana. Come on. Pull it out. Oh, she's playing bishop. Oh, bishop e3. I thought she played bishop f4. So if black plays knight to g4, she wants to play bishop d4. Hacking the c-pawn, stopping bishop c5 check. Bishop e3 is as good as any. It's still going to be a long fight. It's just, you know, not, doesn't seem like it's going to finish well for white. But the game's going to take a long time. And other news, there's no other news. It doesn't seem like anybody's winning. Well, Fedorowicz is winning against the 2300, but he's on a lower board. Michelle Katharina needs it to, to win to get a norm. She has a nice advantage against Zapata. She has a nice attacking position. Exactly. Yes. 
Anybody in either chat has any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. They won't be good answers, but we'll be happy to answer them. If you have Garrett's turn during the meeting. Mm -hmm. Bishop G7, Benjamin says that's pretty good. Controlling this, if white plays Bishop D4, black will play Knight F3 check and take the bishop with check. So this makes sure the pawn is pretty safe. And if it's Black's turn to move, Black is going to play Knight to G4, I think, attacking the bishop. And the bishop can't go to D4 anymore. So this move seems quite good. And the rook can come out mm -hmm. no, somewhere. The engine keeps wanting to play Knight C6, but I'm a human. I want to play Knight G4. What human's going to go here? Okay, she played h3, so she stopped knight g4. And he'll probably play rook e8. Threatening knight takes d3. Let's see. Yep, they agree. Rook, rook e8. Yeah, now the knight g4 is not a move. The knight c6 makes more sense. Put something on d4, b4. But I think rook e8 first, put the rook in the center. Still just the one game drawn between Bruzan and Joe on board one. Board two position is equal, it says. Naroditsky is slightly better on board three. Mora Diabati has a big advantage on board four. Deepak is worse on board five. And Quesada Perez, the other Yasser, is better on board six. Wait, she does have a drink. It came out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, he's playing rookie eight. Yeah. yeah, white just doesn't have any counterplay. White doesn't really have any good plan. Just like sort of waiting to lose. C2 pawns weak, so the knight's going to go to b4, d4. Black has two bishops. White doesn't have any pawns for the for the two pieces for the rook. Black has a big majority on the queen side. You start pushing the queen side pawns, b5, d4, a5. There's really nothing much for white to do. White has a time disadvantage also. So far, Black's been playing really well. Shocking. I'm doing egg. Hmm? What were you trying to do? Something? Yeah, try to add a command. Mm. Dina has three and a half out of eight. She lost her game this morning. And she has another tournament in Charlotte at the same place starting tomorrow, weekend tournament, with a lot of the same players. Yeah, 
it looked like she wanted to play rook f to e1 and then she's changing her mind yeah she'll probably play it and she could play rook f4 there's rook d4 check no that takes d3 because the bishop is controlling d4 Wonder how GM Darcy is doing. What? There's no GM Darcy in the tournament. No wonder you're wondering how they do. What was the name of the show? Miami Vice. Mm -hmm. I never watched that show. I've never been a TV person. I remember when it was huge, though. Why won't my computer work? Um, I guess I'm looking at one of them. No, you wouldn't take the pawn on a7 uh, because then black black would play b6 and the bishop's trapped. The only grandmaster to even consider bishop takes a7 would be Bobby Fisher. Uh, somebody already made the Fisher joke. It was spelled Fisher wrong. That's good. That's because nothing ever works, Grobuntu. I wonder if Grobuntu has his red head on. Oh, snap. I don't know what's letting Grobuntu do. Uh... Oh, yeah, we allow chess.com links. I was like, why is he allowed to paste a link? But we allow chess.com. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to me. He's a super mod. Oh. Super mod, super mod. She, she played king f2 didn't expect that one nothing wrong with it but didn't expect it i thought she was gonna play rook f1 i thought her hand was over her rook but it was over her king Never makes sense to give up. Never give up. Remember what Jimmy Valvano said. Never give up. Never give up. And then he died. Was he your favorite basketball coach? Who? Jimmy Valvano. I don't know. For several is. trillion dollars, what <laughs> college basketball team did he coach? I don't, I don't have any idea. North Carolina State. Hmm. They have a foundation because he had cancer and died of cancer. And when he had cancer, he said, never give up and so forth. Huh. Hey, Magic Ninja, how's it going? So black can play in several ways. Black can just do nothing, b6, c5. Or black can play knight c6 and put something on d4, probably a knight. And I mean, white doesn't really have much to do. White's just sort of waiting to lose. White can't really get any counterplay anywhere. White's, white's <laughs> rooks aren't very good. <clears throat> the knight really isn't doing anything on e5 except blocking black's pieces. You can't play knight c4, can't go anywhere. So knight c6 makes a lot of sense. Gets out of the way of the bishop, gets out of the way of the rook, 
gets out of the way, move, move. And then we could play knight d4, bishop d4, and knight b4. Yeah, he played knight c6. He's playing very reasonable and logical this game. Very suspicious. Yeah, North Carolina is right next to uh, West Dakota. They're, they're like that, son. <clears throat> For the first time, I don't see the elbow. That's true. <clears throat> he might just be leaning back. No, he doesn't mean suspicious like, you know, he did anything. <laughs> no, I just mean I can't believe people are playing good moves. When I was playing chess 30, 40 years ago, nobody played good moves. That wasn't the style at the time. Now, <laughs> is North Carolina above South Carolina? Eh. Sometimes it's above it, but often it's just, it's to the West. It depends where you are in both states. Or goes east. Huh? Or North Carolina. Well, White made a few mistakes, but one of the things she did was she sort of went crazy sacrificing. She thought she was being crazy like a fox, but she was being crazy like Fox News. Then the game was interesting, but the engine did not approve. She played wild and crazy Steve Martin style. Black's play is very reasonable. Black played very uh, solid moves. Um, made things sort of easy for himself, took the took the sacrifice material, and now Black's position just looks great. It's basically just two pieces for a rook. That's correct. When Dina went RAR, the only opponent that she did that to that didn't complain was RAR. RAR said it was fine. The other opponents complain. Will she win or lose rating points after this tournament? She will lose rating points. I was losing rating points before she was born. So I'm the one to ask. So one idea which I just saw is instead of knight d4, you could play knight b4, which I saw earlier, but I didn't see why. Threatening knight c2, white will defend c2. Then black has the excellent move knight d5, which I just saw. So knight c2, threat, knight b4 threatening knight c2, white does something about it. Then black plays knight d5. I don't know what white does about that. Knight d5 is super annoying. And I know super annoying. You can ask Karen, she'll tell you that I'm super annoying. So I, I know what I'm talking about. Okay, she played what, Rook E1? Rook F E1. Yeah, very difficult for white if black plays knight b4, knight d5. It's amazing. The engine says that's the best line. What? I didn't even use the engine. Knight b4 with this tremendous threat of knight c2. Tremendous. Forking everything. White does something about it. What? I don't know. Something. Then Black plays knight d5. Then I don't know what white does. Then I give up. And the engine says Black is almost plus five here. Yeah, knight d5 is annoying. I don't like that.
I, I guess after night before she'll play Ricky too. And then he'll play night D5 and then I, I give up. I don't know what she'll do there. The white's black's minor pieces are all over white. This guy asked you if I was super annoying or just regular annoying. <laughs> I scratch sometimes. <laughs> it's not, you know, I wouldn't say super annoying. Yay. That's the best <laughs> I'm going to get. I wouldn't say super annoying. <laughs> so I don't understand, I guess, why I see knight if, if the knight gets to d5. Well, then I'm threatening knight takes bishop, rook takes knight, bishop d4, winning all of white's pieces. Oh, I didn't see the bishop d4. Yeah, okay. that's, yeah, once you lose this bishop, my dark square bishop comes to life. I see now. Like the two bishops just destroy a rook. So I don't want to, white doesn't want to trade the knight for the bishop. The bishops just swarm the rooks. You got a rook and two bishops for two rooks. That's no good. It's a very unpleasant feeling that she has. I've had it many times. You know you're going to lose. You can't really resign. And you're just sitting there choking on your rage. I mean, that that's... <laughs> and, and by the way, if two super GMs were playing, White would be resigning. If this was like Carlson Caruana, then White's resigning here. But, you know, you're playing a 2140 fee day. You can't resign. So she knows she can't resign. But she knows she's going to lose, so it's a pretty annoying situation. Yeah, People are watching. Everybody's rooting for her. She's trying to figure out, what am I going to do this weekend? I'm going to be exhausted to play their tournament. I can't believe I'm playing more chess this weekend. <laughs> then she's like, I got to go to L.A. and New York. Ugh. So she's thinking about all that now. <laughs> yeah, when I did back-to-back -back tournaments, when I did that last year, I did the National Open, and then I did the women's and the main event there. And then a week later I went to Philly and I played in the world. Same thing, yeah. Same thing, the women's and then the main. And it was just too much chess. It was too much tournament chess. I was so burned out by the end. <laughs> it was ridiculous. I didn't take any buys either. We were like that with the poker, too, this summer. You know, you get tired. Mm -hmm. I was sick, too. Yeah, you got sick. Somehow I was sick and you weren't. I've never heard of such and a I, thing. And I never ne got it. I never heard of anything Everybody like that. Everybody around me was getting stuff. They were I've known Karen for many years. It's never I'm sick and she's not. Well, that's not true. Never. <laughs> I don't really get sick that much, but I was worried because people were calling it... Um, the flu and COVID, and I, I never got anything. I'm ZD Donya fan. I thought they rated us earlier. Are they trying to I, yeah. parade their... Very, very suspicious. <laughs> Are you trying to advertise your channel name? Like constant raids? Then he'll be banned in his children's children. It's probably Donya too. <laughs> He just got banned. <laughs> Go tensor extension. We love banning our channel. I guess I'm not going to stick up for him. <laughs> We're sort of like Carbopulous Michael. We like banning and he likes killing people. I sure love killing people. And the funny thing is Morty killed him. Well, it was an accident. But still. Man, these games aren't ending. I thought last round, lots of quick draws. Okay, Seth Homa drew. So we have a draw on the bottom board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, her nails are pretty cool. 
I wanted to get mine done in some sort of um, poker thing, but I waited too late to do that. What she's thinking now is chess isn't as fun as I thought it was. <laughs> this is just not fun. <laughs> yeah. That's how I feel sometimes in chess too. Like suffering, but I'm not ready to resign. A knight d4, not as good as knight b4, but good enough. <clears throat> if I was white, I'd probably play rook a c1, but I wouldn't be happy about it. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with knight, knight d4. If white plays rook c1 and never takes the knight, then black can just start pushing the pawns. There's nothing white can do. b5, b4, a5, c5. God damn. There's a lot of pawns coming up here. a4, b3, rar, sack, sack the exchange, make a lot of arrows. But bishop takes d4, bishop takes d4, then black has the two bishops and the what else? Mm -hmm. I mean, that knight's a monster on d4. I should probably take it. Because rook a c1 is so pathetic, the rook on c1 defending a pawn. And the knight on right. d4 is a monster. So I might as well just take the knight and get rid of it. But yeah, like everything loses, so it's tough to find what move loses the least. Yeah, and she took Do we think she's aware of how dire the situation yeah, is? Yes. That's the worst part. If if it was like you guys, you'd be like, I don't know, I have a rook for two bishops. <laughs> but if you're a better player, you're like, oh, never been so bad. So he can just trade rooks and win, but he probably won't. Black wants to keep rooks on the board because white's two rooks don't have any infiltration squares that can do anything. So white's only counterplay and I use that term loosely, is pushing the H pawn. And if I have a rook and two bishops on the board, he ain't pushing H pawn. And these rooks can't get active. So black doesn't really want to trade rooks. Black wants to play something like rook G8, threatening bishop H5 check, or rook H8. And then black can just start pushing his queenside pawns. And black, white doesn't have really a plan to, to do anything. But trading rooks does win. Then this pawn potentially in some fantasy world could be good. But I'm assuming black could just take and start pushing the queenside pawns. And black has too many queenside pawns. Black has a lot of queenside pawns. And also bishop f7 attacks the a2 pawn. We can't play rook a1 because that's pathetic. So he might trade rooks. It's better not to trade rooks because white wants to trade rooks. White's two rooks are sort of tripping over each other. And then black has the one rook that works really well with the bishops. So he has the same problem she does. Every move loses, she has to play one of them. And for him, every move wins, he has to play one of them. So it's, it's a tough situation. Okay. But the rook and two bishops work really well together, so he should keep the rook on the board. First time here, who is who? I'm Ben, and Karen's the other one. Thanks for asking. Your name is also Boyd. How come everybody's name is Boyd? Do you know a Dawson Boyd? No. Yeah, he played Rick G8. That's correct. That's the engine move. 
Black's threatening Bishop H5 check. Then the king has to go here, and then Rook takes G2, and you know, God damn. <clears throat> The engine saying A4. A4. The chances of A4 being played are very small. I think G3 is the best move. Then if Bishop H5 check, I have King G2. I don't really see another move. I think she has to play g3. I mean, bishop h5 check is completely winning. So you have to play g3. And if bishop h5, king g2. Fortunately, black can play like bishop f7 to d5. Damn. Nice bishops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two bishops just totally crush a rook. It's the equivalent of just being up a piece. Because technically you are up a piece. Two bishops is two pieces, and one rook is one piece. And then if you do math, that, that's one more. So, Is that a general rule that two bishops and one rook harmonize nicely? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the rook and two bishops. Yeah, typically... If you have a random position in an endgame, a rook and two bishops is about the same as two rooks and a knight. I mean, one side's up the exchange, but the bishops really work well together with a rook. King f4, move it on up, move it on up to the king side. The engine wants black to play king d6, which is very logical. Bishop f7 is a good move. Puts pressure on a2 so the rook can't leave and it threatens rook takes g2 bishop can come to d5 dominating the center bishop f7 is reasonable king d6 reasonable any move is reasonable c5 cementing the bishop on d4 bishop h5 reasonable in fact bishop h5 I, 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 I. the engine isn't saying bishop h5 but i like bishop h5 I guess then she could play g3. That seems forced. So it doesn't win immediately because of g3. Otherwise, it wins immediately. How's your charge there? Perfect. Look at that. 89%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. He did play bishop h5, but she has to play g3. There's, there's no other move. You can, you can resign if you don't play g3. Because rook takes g2, you can resign. The g4 just loses a pawn. Rook e2 loses the rook. And rook g1 loses the rook. So he has to play g3. I'm not sure what he's going to do after g3. I think he missed g3. I don't think he would have played bishop h5 if he saw g3. It doesn't matter, Black's winning, but I'm not sure what his next plan is after that. He could play Bishop C5 to D6, which I'm just now seeing. Man, that looks good. Man, that looks really good. No, you can't play King takes F5, Dina. No, you can't do that. No, 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 you can't do that. No, no, we can't allow her takes G2. No. Yeah, it takes G2. Yeah. yeah, you can't, you, you can't, yeah, that's, yeah, that, that's, that's it. Yeah, Black's pieces are all perfect. I've never seen better pieces. Yeah, now he'll he'll she'll play like rook c1, and then he'll play c5, b5, b4, a5. White can't do anything. White has no legal moves. The bishops control all the squares. And the black rook is attacking c2 and the white rook's defending c2. <clears throat> Probably if black wants to win quickly after rook c1, he can swing his bishop around to a3, attacking the rook, and then take on c2. 
Yeah, I was thinking that same thing. Mm. But there's no reason to do that. Just play C5, B5, B4, A5. White White has no moves. Although it is tempting to play Bishop A3 and take on C2. Could you use the other rook? To... This rook? Yeah, and then, then you could go maybe A4 to keep that bishop from coming in. Oh, if, yeah, but then the rooks are both trapped here. Yeah, oh. just defending. I don't know. Also, you can't play the other rook because I imagine this rook was here. Yeah. Then bishop e3. Yeah. And so forth. That's true. Yeah, he's maybe just not on any open files at all. See, I'm better than the people watching the stream, and Dean is better than all of you, and we know how bad her position is, and you guys don't. You guys are like, ah, it's two pieces for a rook. That's better for black. Do I think it's pretty obvious to see Kaman is... Yeah, the engine's saying it's plus six because it's position so bad. Good night, this snob. C5 is the professional move. Then white knows, like, black is like, okay, you can't move. And then white's like, yeah, I can't move, you're right. Okay, so he's he's playing for threats. So I wanted to play bishop C5 to A3. Mm -hmm. He's playing bishop G7 to H6. Okay. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Also, occasionally mm -hmm. white gets checkmated. There's some, the king's a little suspicious here. So she has to play rook g1 now. She has to trade rooks because this rook is too good. He won't trade rooks, but, you know, the truth hurts. Yeah, so she played rook g1. That's her last hope. Trading rooks wins, but that barely wins. He can also play bishop g6 check. He can play rook f2 check. He's going to play rook f2 check. Well, this is why I didn't, like, the bishop on d4, like, was protecting g1. This is just playing for an idea to win a material when that's not necessary. Bishop on d4, like, kills the white rook. So you play c5 and you just chill. Now white white has some false hope. Yeah, bishop g7 was uh, impatient. He'll play rook f2 check, and then he'll play bishop f7. You're playing bishop g6 check? I think bishop g6 check wins. Actually, bishop g6 check is scary because the white king has to walk into a skewer. Okay, she played the only legal move, king f4, and therefore best. See, the skewer doesn't win right away because the rook on g2 isn't defended. So he could check and then play rook here which is very strong. Okay, he's playing bishop h6, also good. And then he's going to check with the rook next move. So this is a nice win that's probably going to happen. She's probably going to play king f3, okay? Mm -hmm. Then he's going to win this way. Takes, takes, bishop takes d3, and then she'll resign. That's probably going to happen. And if you take, you go here. And if you don't take, that's even worse. So that's why he played this way. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, he's going to take and play bishop takes d3. Yeah, that's because he's a young kid. He has to play the tactical. He can't just slowly win. He has to you know, sack on d3. Hey, well, I mean, it's more exciting. After bishop d3, if white plays rook to d1, Black has bishop to d2, the only winning move. Otherwise, otherwise, white's winning. Then if you take, I go here. That's what he's calculating now.
she sees bishop takes d3. She's looking at it right now. And then she's like, I rook d1, bishop d2, darn. Needs more tea. <laughs> he's yeah. he's triple checking rip d1 bishop d2 because that's it's a little dicey but it worked it works so if, if you don't play bishop d2 white's winning god damn but after bishop d2 then i think bishop takes c2 and can't do anything so he's just triple checking that and he triple checked it she might play rip d1 because he has to play bishop d2 Maybe he missed rook d1 and he goes crazy and doesn't play bishop d2, except for one thing. Andrew Jiang is the right age to play black at this position. He's like, yay, I see all these tricks. <laughs> He's very pleased. Two bishops, what else? So I think she'll play rook d1, he'll play bishop d2, and she'll resign. That's my prediction. What's funny is, if she plays rook g2 to defend her pawn, mm -hmm. he still plays bishop d2, attacking her pawn. And then if takes, then c2 still wins. That's actually probably the best move, just winning the c pawn. So you can't, you can't even defend the c pawn. Bishop D2 is so obvious that he saw it that she might just resign. But you might as well make him play it. Yeah, so I predict Rook D1, Bishop D2, handshake. She's thinking about handshake now. Don't handshake now. Rook D1 first. But he played a great game. I want to see what the thing says. I mean, he played, he didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, he's playing 97.6. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's crazy. He's mm -hmm. 2100. You know what? That's like Fox News. I didn't know it showed it while it, the game was in progress. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's pretty cool. Only if you're a grandmaster. You can't do it mm -hmm. on your account. Is that, oh, is that through um, event? Yeah, I just here where the games it. are. I just double, I just make it big. Man, these guys are on board two playing for first. They're not messing around. Uh, I thought you had to get that from running a report. The guys on board two are both playing over 98. Man, I guess that's why they're on board two. Yeah, I'm Chuck, damn it. I think her opponent from yesterday was like 97. Something yeah, like Fedorowicz won against 2300. Good way to finish. Yay. Puckett's playing the Charlotte Open tomorrow. You could drop everything you're doing and drive up to Charlotte tomorrow and just say Puckett. <laughs> She's like, should I play Rook D1 and then resign or should I resign now? This is the conundrum she's in. It's 100% he's going to play Bishop D2 so she can resign now. Yeah, yeah, she's playing this weekend too. It's a lot of chess. Which starts tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Archer comes back Sunday. She's in resign mode. And she's going to resign. She's not going to play Rook D1. She's thinking about the game and choking on her rage. Yeah. That's why I'm a grandmaster. I don't play any good moves, but I know what people are going to do. 
<laughs> what on? I mean, the guy played a great game. She played a little crazy with bishop h5 check, knight takes h7. That was that was going too far. And also, she made a mistake early in the game with knight f3, mm -hmm. giving giving him a better position already. That was a very smooth win from him. Well, that's no fun. Chess is no fun. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of losing in chess and in poker. It's just the way it is. Some things will never change. It's a very smart play, sir. I eat plant-based burgers occasionally. You were shocked? <laughs> what? I just had a plant-based burger. It, um, Bobby's Burger, maybe? Yeah, Bobby's mm -hmm. Burgers. How was it? Was, it was real good. Yeah. Real I mean, they're all open at like 8 a.m. and they're packed. Look, don't think that strong players don't cry when they lose. That's what they do. They they asked Karpov and Kasparov in like a joint interview like 20 years ago, when's the last time you cried? Mm -hmm. And because and Karpov is like when I was seven, and Kasparov was like last week, you know, when I, I played this. You know. <laughs> yeah. See, because Kasparov was telling the truth. Some people cry more. And you know which grandmaster cries the most? No. Jesse. Oh, oh, that's right. <laughs> Wait, look at Karen. Take up the whole street. Oh, okay. Yeah, I cry. I'm I'm a crier. I cry probably every day. <laughs> you cried today? Did you get knocked out of a poker tournament? I don't remember crying, but you know, probably did. <laughs> she read my book, Cry Like a Grandmaster. What is what is this game doing here? Oh, there we go. This is the classroom. Hey, pajama, hey, pajama. Let's get to this position. Okay. This is the this is the first position where she made a bad move. Knight f three. Then after knight f three, she just went crazy. Knight g five, bishop h five, knight h seven. I mean, it's the last round, so you know. If that was the first round, that would be terrible. But last round. You're married to Ben. Why wouldn't you cry? <laughs> also, she saw Elaine dance, so she cried, and then she cried again. If only Lawful Waffle was here to get that joke. Chat is so mean to Ben. Sad face. Oh, no. Remember the quote of the stream, Ben is not very annoying. So. <laughs> or not super annoying. Super annoying. That's what it was. I'm a bit tired, so I don't really know that I can meet Karen. Yay, buy my chessable course. Do as I say. How many games are left? Uh, well, there's a tournament this weekend that she's playing in. 
And when this, this tournament's game, over. Like other games. Oh, lots of games. All the games are left. Except board one. Yeah, this is the last round, but there's still a bunch of board two is equal. Round. Board three is equal. Board four is equal. Deepak is slightly worse on board five. And Quesada Perez is winning against Brewington Hardaway. Mm. And Ehrenberg is worse. Man, Ehrenberg's had a tough tournament. And Krista Yip is worse with White against Andy Woodward. Well, she is, he is higher rated than her. So, all right. See what the final. That's not the final. They've made some more moves that hasn't caught up yet. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, the guy played like 98. Truth hurts. Yeah. Yeah, he's done pretty done pretty well what was he like 1700 when he did the camp mm -hmm. that with you? Right. yeah Your chest. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hey, Dina. Finally, a short game. Now, now you don't have to play any more chess until tomorrow night. <laughs> yes, big break. I um I think I blundered that uh, in that line like I I was I was planning on e6 but the king goes to c8. Yeah. Well, first of all, if you see the I don't know if you're in the in the room. It Let me join. Room. What's that? Let me join. Yeah, join the room so we can explain what happened here. Yeah. Okay, you joined. Yes. Did they uh -huh. give you powers? Do you have special powers now? Let me see. Where's our producer? Give her special powers. Yes. No. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's good. No, no, let's let's go back first. Knight f3 is a mistake. Oh. You're supposed to play bishop f3. Oh. Okay. Yeah, and then you can if you could take the knight and triple the pawns, then your knight can go to f3 or e2, and you can play the same way. Oh, After knight f3, you... dc, the engine already doesn't like your position. Yeah, yeah, I assume. And then he didn't have to play bishop g8. He could just move his queen up. Bishop g8 was surprising, but it's not bad. It was okay. actually sort of funny. So, yeah, it didn't look right, but yeah, I just just castle and maybe in knight d4. Maybe now I can do no. Still doesn't work. I mean, it's a little crazy. You have to watch out for knight e2 check. Be careful. Oh yeah, yeah, no. Be careful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, or bishop d1, like this, I thought. But yeah, it doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. Yeah. yeah I don't bishop know, f3 like... instead of knight f3 is normal. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah. So he played, is it, it, I guess it's a theory, right? Yeah, bishop f3 is theory. Yeah. yeah after yeah, knight so f3 takes, the engine just hated your position already. And then you played crazy sacrifices, which we liked. That was exciting. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't good, but it was exciting. I mean, his king oh. d7 was a good move. That was correct. That was the only I... move that wins. Yeah. I don't know what's the best practical option here to continue. I thought it was queen h3. I thought it was what you did. The The engine said he played about 98 this game. Like, he didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, yeah, correct. His technique was good. 
And here, wow, sure, Gossel. Yeah, wow. it just said that he that he played well. You know, I mean, this yeah. is hopeless. It's just two pieces for a rook. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think no, I like. I definitely shouldn't go for this line against these kids because they're they know all the theory. That's right. Yeah, he knew all the theory. Yeah, he was playing yeah. pretty quickly. Yeah, and um, I was like, when I, I remember f five is the like ancient move, and as long as soon as mm -hmm. he played f five, I was like, why did I go here? <laughs> can I just can we go back and I change the move number one to knight f three? <laughs> But it was funny because I saw he was in the base before the game. I saw that he was playing e5 and c5. And I was like, I don't know what to play against e5. Like, move number one. I don't know what to play. Mm -hmm. And I, I just couldn't come up with a solution. Because previously, I used to play, like, a four knight scotch. Mm -hmm. Or just, like, scotch uh, direct. But I I kind of, like, I kept having very bad statistics there. So um, I started feeling very very much disgusted about that opening and mm. i i had this like i had this game with knight c3 uh five days ago actually in israel just one day before i arrived but um i doubt he would see that game i think he just knows the theory uh, in general hey real quick thank you john bartholomew for the raid Yay. oh john thank you so much i think how how is john doing He's always doing well. He's John. Right. But I, I'm I'm happy to see you, Karen, here as well. <laughs> you Were you from the very beginning? Time. Almost the beginning. I was just slightly late. <laughs> oh. But I, I also feel like by the end of the uh, tournament, it's getting tougher and tougher, like, energy-wise to... Um... Yeah. yeah, it's tough so... to be paired with kids at the end because they have a lot of energy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's I, I'm a bit sad that it was like a short game. But um yeah, I guess it happens. It was full of excitement. You were sacrificing on the king's side. You played King D7. Oh, I have to show you a funny line. Yes. I have to. In in this position. Um wait, oh hold on a sec. I think I lost the classroom. Just a second. Yes, I'm here. Yeah. After you played queen h3, so bishop okay. takes g6 was the engine move, but my the sec the second engine line was my favorite. Knight d4, bishop takes h7, and now the best move for black is king c6. Oh, boy. Wow. Because the king is safe on c6. Knight c2 is going to happen, or just queen e7. And there's no bishop f5 check. Right. I was like, king c6, that's the best move in this position. But okay, he didn't play knight d4, but knight d4 is okay also. But what he did is the engine like what he did. Yeah. Yeah, I, at first, I, I'm surprised the engine puts short castle in the first spot, like bishop f4, but okay, if he takes the pawn anyway. Right, yeah. Yeah. If I if I don't go for bishop h5, then I would go short castle mm -hmm. and knight d4. Right. And here bishop h5, g6, and my, maybe now bishop d1. Yeah, I would have played something like this, but I, I mm -hmm. understand that black is to, doing totally yeah, black's totally doing good well here. here. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you play the opening again, you have to play bishop f3. Okay, here bishop Instead of knight f3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, uh, Oh, to be honest, like queen g3 and bishop e2, I kind of came up on my own because after mm -hmm. f5, I didn't know much. So at least I found two more moves of, of the theory. Yeah. Thanks for the gift sub, sir. Percival, thanks for giving John a sub. And Yay, go JB. Before. That's interesting. Bishop d2 and king takes d2. Yeah, the king's pretty safe on d2. The center is pretty blocked. Yeah, no, it doesn't on F3 is, Your bishop on F3 is a monster, and your knight can go to F4. Knight E2 or knight H3 to F4. Rook B1, yeah. and you have a pass pawn. I mean, king's really safe on D2. Right. Oh, it does look good. I agree. Wow. No, actually, here I really like it. But um, what if he doesn't take 
what if he takes on c3? Oh, bishop h5. Oh, yeah, uh, threatening bishop. But what if he goes, like, takes? Now I wanted to play bishop e2, and now, like, bishop e6. Oh, you go yeah, again. Bishop, bishop, f, bishop f3 again. Ah, uh, and knight c6 you want to I mean, take, I bishop right? is just so good on f3. Yeah, now you can you... take and play knight e2. And just, uh... you know, that has this terrible pawn structure. And your knight uh -huh. has f4. And your king is safe. Hmm. I get this it is now. Just, this is just double edged. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, it's a nice position. Yeah, after knight f3, dc3, the engine already hated your position. Yeah, I, I, and I can understand him. Yeah, knight, I, I, now I see that the knight definitely doesn't belong to f3, belongs to e2. Yeah, it's yeah. a really tricky line if you haven't done a lot of prep. Because it's it doesn't seem normal to play bishop e2 to f3 and knight e2. Knight f3 is so natural, knight e5. It just makes sense. But yeah, it, I guess it's it some kind of Karo ideas, right? Mm -hmm. It like in some in some like what I had, uh, it's funny, what I had this morning was like my opponent played bishop e2 with the idea bishop f3. Mm -hmm. There is this idea in Panov. Yeah, interesting. Okay, well, um, I guess we finished the tournament. Yay, it's over. Now you get to play another tournament. <laughs> Crap. It's a fly okay. over the U.S. Yeah. Oh, it's, <laughs> well, it's good that, well, like, there is, like, time to forget, right? You you have to focus on the next one. Mm -hmm. That's true. Nice. Well, it's been, it's been, um, Amazing having you. Thank you so much once again, Ben and Karen. I'm really, yeah, really excited. Really interesting. Only one draw. That's good. Lots yeah. of decisive games. We enjoyed it. Very excited. Well, I, usually I never have draws. So you were, I think yeah. you, it was a big, uh, big um, surprise that, that it happened to be one draw. Normally no draws. Uh -huh. Wow. Right. So guys, I think, I think, yeah, it's, um, I think that's about it. I don't know if Chad has any questions. Well, good luck on your tournament this weekend. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks a lot. We're going to have Sabina Foysor who's going to commentate. Oh, awesome. Oh, that's good. Yeah, she's good. Mm -hmm. Woman Grandmaster. So, guys, get, get excited for that one. We'll, when we will see Ben and Karen again here. I hope we will see you guys again. Really, I yeah, absolutely enjoyed it. Yeah. We enjoyed doing it. Nice. Um, let me know if you do you do you like. You don't plan to stream right away, do you? No. We're, if... After we do this, we're done for today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, nice. Well, thank you so much then, and I guess um, I guess it's time to raid, um. Yeah, let's let's go somewhere. All right, have a great weekend. Win some games. Okay, Thank you so much. Weekend. You too, once again, Tremendous. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being there. It was amazing getting to know you too. For I'm speaking from my community because it's the first time and uh, really looking forward to more. Yeah, I see. Okay. Thanks. Bye bye. Just dojo raid.